Hi, this is Allison Lewis. I'm a time management expert, author of four books, and yes, the mother of two college-age kids. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the introduction to time management. This is gonna be a step-by-step -step training, and I really believe this is important because I know I struggle with time management. That's why I've written all these books. That's why I am regularly studying and learning about how to improve my own time management. Why is this so important? Because time affects everything in our lives. It helps us get things done. It helps us achieve all those things that we want to do during the workday and at home. But when time management skills are, are somehow harder, it affects our lives at ways that we just, it's almost unimaginable. We find ourselves overwhelmed, not having enough time. It looks into our heart and it says, why am I not able to spend enough time with my family, enough time following my purpose and dreams and passions? Why do I just find myself buried under a pile of papers, running late to everything that I wanna do? And I feel this stress and overwhelming anxiety. That's what we're gonna be talking about in this introduction. I believe that this is something that you're looking for as well. As we get started in this, I think it's important to know that I've written books, I've written The Seven Minute Solution and The Seven Minute Life Daily Planner because I needed help. This is one of the things that I researched for years because I have those things that are you know, just overwhelming in life. I don't get things done, I run late. So why did I write these books? Because just like you, I wanted to find solutions. I wanted to find solutions to my problems, to the areas that I struggled with most. Over the last 10 years, I've studied all that I could find out about time management. And now I wanna be a problem solver. For those of you that come to these videos, I wanna share the information that I've learned over the last 10 years to help solve problems for you because I know I'm not alone. I know there are people all around the world that are struggling <laughs> with just getting their life together. So let me start by saying what we're not gonna cover. This is not a video about time management cliches. It's not about let's work smarter, not harder. It's not about how to get more out of less and it's certainly not about how to find three more hours in the day. That'd be great if we could do all those things, but I really think most of that's impossible because life just crushes in on us. So that's not what we're gonna cover. When I went to Wikipedia to look at what people all around, I guess, the, the literary um, areas or those people that study and they put in and they're able to publish on Wikipedia, this is what they said. The major themes arising from the literature on time management include the following. Now, I go to Wikipedia all the time, and I wanted to know what the experts said on time management. I think this is what is true, that time management involves creating an environment that's conducive to effectiveness. It means getting rid of the clutter. If you could see my desk right now, you know these are things that I struggle with. If you wanna improve your time management, you have to create that space where you have everything you need that is conducive to effectiveness so you can get things done. Time management really is setting priorities, knowing when you come into the office, the tasks that you need to do, and then being able to rank them, one, two, three, four, and being able to mark those things off your list so you move forward and you do get things done. Number three, according to Wikipedia, is carrying out the activities around those priorities. So you've gotten in a place that's comfortable, you've written down a to-do list of some kind, you've set the priorities of what you want to accomplish, and then there begins this process of actually taking activity, of sitting down with a pen and a paper or meeting with the people so that you actually can do what you've said you're gonna do that day and mark them off, that check mark is really important and do those most important things. And I really do like what this one says. This last point is that time management is the related process of reducing the amount of time you spend on non-priorities. We call that pruning, getting rid of the things 
that are not important. And that's hard to do. It's hard to not do those nine priorities, but that is what you hear. That's not what we're gonna be talking about today. I think we all know what we need to do to accomplish time management. We need to organize our lives. We need to know what we're gonna do. We need to have a written plan of action. We need to have that big vision of where we're heading to accomplish our goals, not only five years from now, but even today. What is it that we're trying to accomplish today? We know we need to focus our attention and get rid of the distractions and do everything we can to limit the amount of interruptions. We know how we can improve our time management. Today, we're not gonna be talking about how to improve our time management. I think we're gonna be talking about something that is way more important than that. So what will you learn by the end of this video? Why should you watch until the very end? Why? Because I think that it's important, vitally important to know why you need better time management. What's the end point? What's the outcome of having better time management? John Arnold is the chief inspiration of the seven minute life. And one time he asked me, he said, Allison, write down your to-do list for today. Write down everything that you need to get done. And so I wrote down all the things that I needed to get done. And then he said something that I felt like was so insightful. He looked at me and he said, Allison, if you were able to get every single thing on your to-do list done today by five o'clock, if you could have everything on that list with a check mark beside it as done, he said, would it have made a difference in your life? Would getting everything done on your to-do list have made a difference in the lives of your family, in your soul, in your heart? Would getting everything done have made any difference at all? And I said to him, John, I don't think so. And then he said, why do you need better time management? Certainly not to get things that are not important to you done. And I really looked at that and I've been studying from the very beginning why you need better time management. So that's what we're gonna be talking about in this video. We're gonna be talking about how your time management affects your life, not just your work life, but all of your life. Time is that container that begins at birth and ends at death. It's that framework that begins the moment you wake up and the moment you go to sleep. Everything in between is time. So time affects everything that happens in your day. Today, we're gonna to be turn, turning time management strategies upside down. That's what I think the seven minute life is about. And that is my heart soul of what I wanna do. We already know how to improve time management. We know we need to get rid of the distractions, the clutter on our desk. We need to have that moment when we walk in with a written plan of action and we begin to focus our full attention and get things done. And we walk out of the day knowing that we've accomplished everything that we said we want to accomplish. Somehow we've gotten to enough. I think that would be awesome. <laughs> I think it would be important to be able to get to enough. Again, but why? Why is that so important? At the end of this video, you'll see three tools that are gonna change your life, that's gonna put everything into perspective and say this information matters. And this is what I want in my life. At the end of the video, we're gonna be talking about why is time so important? because of priorities and purpose and potential. We want excitement back in our life. We wanna be able to make commitments that we stick to and finish. We wanna have that passion back. We wanna be determined about what we'll do. In my life, I want clarity and I also want conviction. These are the things that time management gives me. These are the why, the priorities, the purpose, the potential, the excitement the commitment, the passion, the determination, the clarity, and the conviction. I think that's why you're gonna watch this video, and I think that's why, as a problem solver of people, I'm not gonna be the one that sits down and says, hey, do this, do this, do this. We'll get to that in a different video. But in order to work hard, to take the challenge, to be willing to learn, 
you have to have some kind of motivation. And the motivation, what is it? This is the motivation. Don't you want that in your life? What's the one thing, that one decision that you'll be willing to make to find that in your life? Some of you know that in my world, I do a lot of study of the brain. There's a lot of things that happen in our mind that either hold us back or move us forward. We call those things cognitive models. Cognition is just taking your brain and stepping out of the noise and taking time to think. That's one of the foundations of how you get to all those wonderful things is that you step out of that busyness and you begin to think and make choices of what you want your life to look like. Not only what you want the output of your time to be to accomplish goals, but what you want the input to be. Do you want to step outside and look at nature? Do you want to be involved in your hobbies? Do you want to read? Do you want to follow that heartbeat of your faith? And as we go through these time management whys, we're going to help you create new habits and new behaviors so you can have more of those things. And how do we do that? Well, let me share, share with you a case study. We were creating a, um, a persona, a person that we believe we can help the most. You know, these are the people with problems that, that I want to be the problem solver for. And uh, I think you'll see a lot of yourself in here. We're going to be talking about a woman today. Next week, next, in the next video, we'll be talking about a man. Uh, but today, we're going to create a persona of the exact type of person that's watching this video and looking for answers to their problems. So I'd like you to meet Martha. Martha is a 47-year-old person and works in the financial services industry. So right off the bat, you may realize who I'm talking about because I worked as a financial advisor for 30 years. So let's start again. Martha is a 47-year-old woman and works in the financial services industry. She has challenges and pain points. Martha is well liked by her colleagues and friends. She's respected in her work. She's very active in the community, but because of the pressures of time, she still feels very alone. She's pulled in different directions much of the time. She's managing her job. She's continuing to learn. She's going to soccer matches and to tennis lessons and and she's taking yoga. She wants to exercise and get better. She's very accomplished, but there's something inside of her that begins to affect her self-esteem, and she doesn't feel that. Martha has a very strong sense of responsibility to her family and to her parents and to the world. She wants to do life right. She gets more requests on her time than she can realistically manage. She's a doer, and people that are doers come to doers and ask them to do more, and that's Martha. Martha has goals and values. She's personable and fun. She wants to lose about 15 pounds. She's staying physically active, but she can't seem to get the weight off because her schedule's so busy she can't exercise. She's active in her church. Her heart and soul are important to her. She's actually in a Sunday school class that's called a life group, and she wants to connect with those friends. She keeps her kids busy and doing things that are good. Is some of this beginning to sound familiar? Let me continue. Martha's an avid reader. She pulls out her Kindle when she can, and she loves to learn. Over the past year, she's read a book on nutrition. She's read three high-end fiction books, two books that are biographies, and several books on self-development. She likes Facebook and Pinterest, but she hates dealing with email. She's very computer savvy. So why is Martha watching this video? Why does she want her time management to improve? Martha's watching this video because she wants to reconnect with life. She feels stuck, sometimes even trapped. And on this day, she searched the internet for valid ideas. She wants to learn. She wants to find information that's truly helpful. Why do I tell this case study? Who is Martha? Martha is me. I'm that financial services executive. 
I'm the person that worked for 30 years that wants to do a good job, that wants to take care of my family and friends, that wants to lose the 15 pounds. I'm the one that's constantly learning and reading and I want more time so I can reconnect with my heart, body, mind, and soul. Why is this case study so important, whether you're a woman or a man? It's because this is how we live. This is how I live. And that's why I'm teaching this video. As we move to the next section, I think it's, <laughs> I think we have to become aware that time moves forward. There's always a starting point and an ending point, whether that's from birth to death, whether it's from the January 1st to December 31st, or whether it's waking up this morning and moving forward to the end of the day. What happens before and between the beginning of the morning and then end of the day? That's where life happens. That's where we breathe and move and have plans and create decisions and decide what we're gonna do with our time. In between the beginning and the end is where life happens. And we get to make choices. We get to choose to let the distractions overwhelm us or we get to choose to have a plan. We get to choose to have bad management, time management skills or we get to choose to understand why we need them why we need to be motivated to change our lives and to create new habits and new decisions, things that we can take control of. It's time to stop drifting. I love that word, drifting through life. Almost like that arrow is a, is a sea with the green dots being a boat and we drift through life at whatever direction the current blows us. I wanna stop drifting. I wanna to begin to make conscious choices. Time's constantly moving forward. I look at my life and I say, am I reading books that are life-changing to help me move forward in the direction I wanna go? I wanna know what my priorities are. I wanna know my purpose in life. I wanna understand my passions. I wanna know what motivates me to do better, to learn more, to become. And as I look at this, I ask the question, What's that one thing? What's that one decision that will help you become consciously aware of the potential that lies inside of you? What's that one decision that when you wake up in the morning, you're gonna say, here's the stake in the ground. This is what I'm gonna see, this is what I'm gonna believe, and this is what I'm gonna do with my time. What is that one decision gonna be for you? So what's the problem with time management? Where is that why? Why don't we do it? We already know how to improve our time management, but just like when I wrote down all those things on my to-do list, if I could have gotten them all done, would it have made a difference? That's the problem. And it's amazing. When people come to the seven minute life, when they're looking for solutions to their problems, we have over 20 tools that I've created because I know what it's like. These are tools that I created for me and they're tools that have been downloaded about a quarter of a million times now. Why? Because people are looking for solutions to their problems. And when they come to our website, the top three things they download, they want to know what their personal goals are. Not just how to fix time management, but who they are, where they're going, where they wanna be. They wanna know what their priorities are. What do they value? If they have time, what is it that they wanna spend their time doing and they wanna discover their purpose? That's the why. That's why we want to have more time. This is the number one, the most downloaded tool that we have at the seven minute life. Who do you wanna be 90 days from today? What are those personal goals? Do you wanna have time to reconnect and renew your personal faith? Do you wanna lose the 15 pounds that Martha wants to lose? Do you wanna spend more time with your kids? Do you wanna volunteer? Do you wanna learn more? What are your personal goals? When I teach this in a class and I put this piece of paper in front of people and I ask, to write, I ask them to write down their personal goals, I guess it's not surprising that people just think with that pen in their hand and they don't know 
they've been so busy they don't even know what they want to accomplish. They don't know who they want to be. Would it be hard for you to take this piece of paper and choose all those things that you've always wanted to do? Not just great big things, but do you want to learn how to cook? Do you want to learn how to play golf? What is it in your life that you want to do? One of the things is that I just wanted to learn how to do Adobe Photoshop. I wanted to do some of these simple things. Um, yesterday I made a cake and it was actually good. I want to learn how to cook. The second most downloaded piece of time management, why is this important? Because there has to be a foundation of what you will spend your time to do so that there's some kind of end game. People want to prioritize their life. What would it be like if you downloaded this piece of paper and you said, what's most important to me? Is it love, friendships, faith, change, philanthropy? Is it family or serving other people? Is it learning, inspiring? Do you want to spend more time out in nature? Do you want freedom? Do you want that adventure back in life? What is it that you want? These priorities should be the beginning of how you wake up in the morning and you say, yes, I've got all this work to do, but I want my life to matter. And this is when I teach a class, the problem that we solve, the most important thing that people hear is how to rediscover their purpose. If you can see that purpose is what you do for others. Purpose is how you use your gifts and talents to change the world and love is the foundation of purpose. My purpose in life is to help people grow and change. I want to share information that makes people's lives better. In the last several years, I've realized that life isn't just about time management for me. Life is about sharing hope. I became so overwhelmed with busyness that I felt a ton of anxiety and stress, and I know I'm not alone. I felt the world crushing in on me, and what it did is it squeezed the purpose out of my life. All I was doing was reacting rather than living out a life that I felt would make a difference in the world. So now my purpose is not just growing and learning, but sharing all of that to make other people's lives better. I want to share hope with the world. Do you know what your purpose is in life? Do you know how you can get there? This is why we solve the problems at the seven minute line. So how do we flip time management upside down? We're beginning to close in on the importance of why you're watching this video. If you look at the bottom, the last thing, that's today. That's where most people start, is they look at today, they wake up, they get in the shower, they get ready, they eat breakfast, they hop in their car, fasten their seatbelt with some kind of mental to-do list, and they get to the office, they park their car, they undo their seatbelt, they walk in, they sit down at their desk, and some kind of fire drill happens. Time management throws out the window, and people pull on you to a point that it all of a sudden becomes five o'clock. You've done nothing but respond to emails and text messages and set through staff meetings with no agenda. And you look at today and you say, where'd all my time go? I didn't get anything done that was on my mind that I said I'd get done. And why is that so painful? Because in the morning when you said, I'm going to finish the budget report, I'm going to get this uh, project analysis completed. I'm gonna make that call to my sister who wants me to help with the birthday party. But what's happened is today, all those plans that you've made, all the time management that you wanted to use has flown out the door. And all of a sudden it's five o'clock, you hop back in your car, you fasten your seatbelt, you drive home, you walk in your house and you've got nothing done. And when that happens, it's painful. I mean, there's just no way around it You've said you're gonna make commitments to get things done and, and you don't get things done. So we're gonna flip that on its head and the seven minute solution flow chart says, what if, what if you'd understand the why before you understood the how of time management? Why do you want to have more time management? Because you wanna start with your priorities. You wanna know what's most important to you. You wanna know when you wake up, what's the point? What's the outcome gonna be? We want to help you understand what you value in life and even what makes your work meaningful. But then we go into purpose. 
And I guess that, I don't know, 95% of people haven't taken time to write down their purpose and we want them to. We want you to rediscover your purpose because that's what fills us with that driving passion. Even when life is hard, that's what gets you up in the morning and says, I want to take my kids to the soccer game. I want to use my skill sets, my aptitudes to do a great job at work. Purpose is not just something that's pie in the sky. Purpose is that internal, that internal part of us that takes us down the road and helps us move time forward with meaning and fulfillment, significance. So what would happen if you turned your time management upside down and didn't worry so much about today until you had rediscovered your priorities, reconnected with your purpose, knew what you wanted to accomplish in your life, created a timeline, and then began to break that down into quarters. And the reason we use 90 days is because not just do corporate earnings come out every 90 days and, and business goals are set every 90 days, but because nature works in 90 days. You know, it goes from summer to fall to winter to spring to summer. And I think that needs to be important. We're going to have great seasons and we're going to have horrible seasons. But what if every 90 days you can know that you had a do-over? You could start fresh. And so this is the funnel that we have. Priorities, purpose, life goals, creating that timeline, breaking it down into smaller goals, and then focusing on today. This is what we call the solution. We have problems in life, not just because we have a to-do list that we can't get done, but because we have a to-do list that has no meaning in our life, so we make no commitment to it. There's something that I call the piano string theory. Now, recognize that I spend a lot of time reading, and yes, textbooks and things that are very nerdy, but this is really life-changing for me. If you had a baby grand piano in a, in a warehouse of some kind, and the only thing in there were two pianos, and you took the grand piano on the far side of the room and you hit middle C really hard, and the middle C on that piano began to vibrate, that string began to vibrate with that sound. On the opposite end of that industrial warehouse, yards away, the middle C on the second piano would begin to vibrate. Why is that? Why, when you hit middle C on one piano and the string begins to vibrate, will the other piano on the opposite end begin to vibrate with you? Because those sounds create vibrate, they create the same noise. They resonate with one another. That's what I was missing out on life is that nothing resonated in my life. I'd walk in, I'd sit in my chair and I'd do stuff that didn't matter. And it doesn't matter that I had a job, that there were still tasks that I had to do that sometimes I didn't like. A lot of times there'd be projects I didn't like. But I understood that there was something more important underneath those tasks that resonated with me. And so today I want you to become consciously aware. I want you to think about the choices that you're making to understand that we have poor management that causes us pain and fear. We look at things and we just aren't aware that we have some choices that can change that. We have the potential to be different. We get to make choices that can change our lives because we don't have to stay how we were. And I look at potential. I was showing a child the other day a rubber band and how it works, and I began to pull it really tight and let it go, and it would fly like five, six, seven feet. That's potential. The rubber band without any challenge, without any prompting, just as a rubber band. But when I took it and I stretched it to its fullest length and let it go, that, that, that rubber band flew. And I think we need to challenge ourselves. We need to take risk. We need to stretch and find tension. And then we need to let go of the old beliefs and the old habits. We need to let the rubber band go and use that potential with more clarity and intention and belief. Potential is already inside of you. What potential means is just like these arrows, there's a starting point and an ending point. And what lies in between those two points is life. But if you have a start and an end, what lies between those two things are the potential to become 
a person that lives in congruence with their priorities, their purpose, their goals. What I love about potential is it means I just haven't done it yet. I have the potential to have better time management. I just haven't done it yet. I have the potential to lose the 15 pounds. I just haven't lost them yet. I have the potential to live a life that matters and has meaning. I just haven't done it yet. Potential is a really important word. So why, why do you need potential? This is a logo we came up with really back in 2006. And I think what you're listening to, why you're on this call is because you want the potential to prioritize, organize, and simplify your life. You look at this and boy, it hits me, is that when I look at that word that says prioritize and it has all those dots and all those circles and it's filled with chaos, I realize not only through my reading but in my own life that humans create uh, crave order. And just like that green circle that's in the middle of all the chaos, life is ready to help you find order. And then I look at the second image there about organizing your life. And I, look, I love football, and I think about how football, how that college football is organized, and I started thinking about the hours and the hours and the hours that football players developing skills and muscle memory. You know, you take 60 or 80 players and you put them out on a practice field, and they have to organize somehow. There's some kind of playbook. They run drills. They get up at 5.30 in the morning, and they lift weights. They have effort. They prepare, and I cannot imagine what it's like to walk into the stadium with thousands of people cheering and embrace that challenge of growing because for the last several months, they've been growing one step at a time. They've been getting stronger. They've become a team. They've begun to organize all their thoughts towards an end point, towards that goal, towards a destination. And I look at my own life, and I think, Wow, I know what the destination is, but I have I done what a football player would do? Have I gotten up in the morning? Have I run the drills? Have I found the challenge? Have I organized my thoughts to a point that I'm willing to pull the rubber band, stretch it, and find tension in my life? And then that last piece, that's the why of seven minutes. That's the why you have a problem and want to solve it. You want a simpler life. You you know, I look at Martha, Martha, I look at myself and I say, you know, I, I want to wake up with purpose. I want to end the day with purpose. And I want to get rid of the clutter that runs through my mind day after day. And I want to find that one place, that one place that matters. So this is solution. You know, we said at this time management skills are important, but are you using something like this that answers the why? you want to have better time management. I call that the aha moment. There's this idea that we're sharing today, that light bulb that goes off that says, okay, maybe it's not just about waking up in the morning and having a to-do list that's meaningless. Maybe I need to understand why I need better time management. So what's the solution? I'd like you to go and download the personal goals and the priority sheet and the discovering your purpose. And I'd like you to watch the videos and go through those things. But as easy as it sounds, it's not all that easy. The football player doesn't walk out on the field and all of a sudden know how to run all the plays. When you go to the website and download these, these tools and watch the short videos, it's still hard. It's hard to understand how to set personal goals. It's hard to know what your priorities are. And it's definitely hard to know why you've been placed on this earth. So the solution is downloading this. I mean, that's a first step. But just like a football player has to practice, probably from the time they were 10 years old, learning how to do this is not something you do once. Learning is a process of learning. It's continual learning. It goes all through life because I have to reset goals. I have to look at my priorities and I have to discover my purpose in life. So why does all this work? Why, why is it a social? Let me, let me just recap where we've gone. Traditional time management is needed. We have to have to-do lists, we have to get things done, we have to clarify what we're gonna do during the day, and somehow the projects and tasks that we get in our work, we have to move forward. The same is true for stay-at-home moms and dads. There's a lot to be done. 
we have to have better time management skills. We've got to get rid of the distraction, the clutter, the interruptions. All of those things are true. But today we've talked about why you need better time management. We talked about how your time management affects life. We talked about turning time management strategies upside down, not walking in the office today and saying, oh my goodness, here are the things that I want to do, and then leave having done nothing. And we've talked about the three tools that will change your life. Setting life goals, working with your priorities, and understanding your purpose in life. That will change your life. Why? Because we want to know all those things. We want to have that potential back, the excitement. We want to be able to commit to things that are life altering. We want to get back that passion, that burning desire that we've missed out on. We want to be determined. I want that determination back in my life. I want to have clarity. I want to see things that are important. And I want to have that conviction, that reason that says, I will get up. I will pull the rubber band today. I will have the tension and the stress and the effort. I'm willing to do that because I want my life to move forward. Time does move forward. It's going to move forward every day, step by step, whether we move or not. We wake up today and 90 days from now, we're going to blink our eyes, it's going to be here and we're going to have had a choice because life works in between the beginning and the end. And you're going to blink your eyes and you're going to say, what happened to that last 90 days? Or we're going to say, we took it step by step and we understood not just the time management skills, but the why. We understood the priorities and the purpose and the goals and we rediscovered the potential that we haven't just done it yet. That's what the introduction to time management is. So what are you going to do now? What's the next step in all this? The next step is that we have to make choices. We have to continue to learn. I want to invite you to watch the second segment of this. It's not just about doing the things. It's about neuroplasticity, which is probably my favorite word. It's that the brain is plastic. It can change. You can understand the why and you can come in doing things differently. We can change behaviors. We can look at those cognitive models that have interested us for so long, not just the outcome, but how can we put habits and things into our lives that will make permanent change? That's what we're going to talk about in the next video. I know that's what you want. I know that that's what I want. I'm Martha. I'm the person that struggles with interruption and distraction. And the bottom line of what I want out of all of this that we've talked today is I want freedom. I feel trapped. I feel stuck. I have things that overwhelm me, and I don't want that anymore. It's not just that those things will go away, but I want to put them in their proper place. And I want freedom out of life. I want to feel love. I want to be with my family. I want to renew my faith. I want to have the freedom that life offers when I make different choices. So that's why we've been here today. This is the first step of an introduction. This is just that first step of change. At seven minutes, I believe I can be a problem solver. And sometimes I think solving problems is just helping people understand the issues. But in order to do that, I need you to comment on this. We all have questions. I have questions. And I'd love to learn from your questions. So just, I want you to leave your comments. Tell us what you think, what you've learned, what you're going to choose to do differently. Ask me questions. I have a lot of things that I don't know that I want to know. And I'm going to call you to engage in learning. I want you to watch the next video that's on neuroplasticity. And if you can't figure out how to leave a comment, just send us an email at info at the seven minute life. Go visit our website and download those worksheets. Stay in touch. Be excited. There are things that are going to happen, and you're going to learn them step by step. I'm Allison Lewis, a person on the very same path, the very same journey, and I look forward to walking on that journey with you. The seven-minute life is important. Finding out the why is important. And I am just going to wait until we can talk next time about how the brain can make changes <laughs> So don't forget to comment. Let us know. Um, we're going to be here next time. I want to say thanks, and we'll see you then. Bye-bye.